All right, welcome to this episode of my playthrough of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. We are in the Sacred Garden on Hindersfjall, looking for Morkvarg and Craven. Craven was the was one who saw Ciri when the Wild Hunt attacked Hindersfjall, and he's come to this garden to try and regain his honor and his name by taking on Morkvarg, who is a somebody for whom nothing was sacred. He attacked his own lands, everything like that, and then he was cursed by a priestess. And it looks like he's turned into some sort of werewolf with the additional curse of, like, the... It's the standard, all food will turn to dust in your mouth and you'll never find fulfillment kind of thing. So, um, we've tracked Craven to this door here. Um, but it's locked or blocked or something, so we just gotta find a way around. So, let's go! blood around here but the actual quest is sending me over here so let's see uh, can't go anywhere here so looks like I'm going through that building anyway that door is locked That door is locked as well. Okay. Okay, so if not through this building, let's talk to Yen briefly. Well, what is it? What do you know about this garden? Let me think. That it's dreadfully overgrown? Had its history in mind. They say Freya herself planted it. When the world was young, the goddess strode across Skellige, sowing seeds among the rocks. But Erberos the snake bit a hole in her basket. All her seeds poured from it and landed here. Thus, this garden is bounteous while the rest of Skellige is barren. You believe that? Is that a serious question? Of course not. Favorable microclimate for plant life. End of story. To transform into a werewolf. It's a dog's life, huh? Well, there's not a youth out there who doesn't have a wolf in his belly. Then the curse confined him to this garden? Couldn't really cut his wolf loose. No question he was top dog here. Just wolfing things down, or not. Geralt, that's enough, hmm? Fine. Still had a few good ones at the tip of my tongue. I'm sure you did. We'll say you won. I found a corpse. Not Craven's, though. Uh-huh. And you thought I'd find this interesting because... Because no bite marks on it. Doesn't seem strange to you. Zeracanian cuisine, dandelion's fame, and shoes with curly toes seem strange to me, yet I don't discuss them with you. Reading between the lines here, think I'm wasting your time? I mean merely that we should focus on what's most important at the moment. All right, going back down. Be careful. Yeesh, she's harsh. I mean, she's known for being harsh, but... Okay, so... What if I go... This way? So how 
do I get around? Obviously don't go down there and around there because that's not there's nowhere down there for me to go. And I don't see any door or anything that I can go through. Ah, but I can go this way. Because there's now additional tracks that go this way. Another corpse. No bite marks here either. So the trail goes down there, but I want to check out this building. Now it's locked, of course. Lots of prints, old and new. His lair must be nearby. that. Gotta go down, provided I can open the sluice. Mechanism looks pretty standard. One lever to choose the sluice gate, the other to work it. All right. So apparently that's the choose one. Okay, what the what door just went? Oh, that one. Okay. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing here, or why.
But the trail goes into this entrance, so uh, I'm going to go into this entrance. Key. Ramond. Where's the key? The chapter house, the crate, but the key, where's the key? Ah. Why so silent, Robert? You thief, you rogue, you horse, son, you worthless bastard! I will find the key without you, idiot, stupid prick! Makes me bite, uh, scratch, mangle, uh, till I drop. Uh, uh, you've got time before the blood's gone from me and, and I return. Listen uh, uh, carefully. Uh, undo, undo the curse. Uh, free me. Uh, finally, I will, I will reward you. Looking for a man named Craven. Apparently came here to kill you. Seems <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> Those who come <clears throat> rarely introduce themselves. <clears throat> what did he look like? <clears throat> uh, no idea. Then I cannot help you. Uh, I've shredded our uh, uh, belly. Uh, uh, So, no joy in being a werewolf? Me? It's the worst. Not the garden to which I'm bound, even. But the hunger. Anything I devour turns to ash. Ash I cannot eat. I cannot drink, yet I bloody live and roam and prowl. The hunger is terrible, ah, terrible. I bite my own flesh, but the smallest morsel burns my throat. Throat. Like boiling tar. Everlasting hunger. Classic as curses go. Goes to explain why all those corpses went untouched. Help, or I'll return to shred you, rip your limb from limb. <sighs> See what I can do. See and do, or I shall return. Mentioned a reward of some kind. Looted, raided, drunk most away, all but one. True. Treasure, head away, yours, just help me! I have the option to feed him. I'm not sure what good it's going to do, because the curse is just going to intercept it.
Uh, it's giving me, it's even giving me the option of what I want to feed him. Sure, let's give him some fried meat. Why not? Actually, I'm going to give him some Katawani stout. See if we can do this the easy way. Morkvarg, of my own free will, I offer you this fare. Now dig in. Won't turn to ash. Won't know until you try. Come on, a spoonful for daddy. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> this shite again! <laughs> okay, yeah. So the curse just intercepts it. Farewell. See you soon. Werewolf hide, monster essence, werewolf mutagen, werewolf saliva, werewolf meat has an exclamation point, and the Katawani stout I gave him. Polymorphy. Uh, oh, wrong button. Uh, to change form, to change one's matter as clay, this is no novice's trick. No flickering glow light or rat killing blue bolt. Only those with bowels soaked in oceans of magic arcana, and f uh, few are born with bowels so absorbent can hope to master it. There are exceptions, of course. Dragons, as is well known, possess such a talent innately. With no need for study, they can, guided by some otherworldly intuition, change between humanoid or and reptilian form. As for the other races, higher vampires, e.g. Bruxae, are known to flicker between states, yet given the under understandable difficulties of conducting research in this area, we do not know if this transition constitutes an act of polymorphy. The human race is obviously much more acce uh, accessible to scholars of polymorphy, their years of study have borne fruit in the form of a set of methods and guidelines for the identification, nurture, and deployment of this talent, the most accomplished result of careful application of these methods, Philippa Eilhart. And then there's the um, Morkvarg contract. Okay, so there's nothing else here. Let's go back out. As I run into a wall. So that's locked. So I can only control... So I can control the three, it looks like. I see it. So using that gate, or now that that gate's open, I can swim underneath it. I'm not changing the water level at all. That's what I thought I was doing. I thought I was going to have to try and change the water level. Pop umbells. I think that's a new one for me. So 
So here's where, here's the locked door I was at before. Craven's blood. Okay, so let's follow his trail. It goes down here. Is there anything else in here that I want to take a look at? Morkvark broke through this door. Must have smelled something beyond it. Symbol of Freya. Untouched. No sign of feeding. Morkvark doesn't devour his victims. Strange. Starting to envy you. Wish to hear a story. If I have to, I'm all ears. Warriors came. They knew they could not kill me. So they laid a trap. Chained me down. Lock me in here! Know what I did? I bit my leg off to free myself. Every bite brought pain. And howling, I vomited blood. Mm -hmm. Biting off your own limbs hurts. Who would have thunk? You don't understand. This was more. My mouth burned like swallowing fire. As if all inside me was torn. Felt I would die, <laughs> but I I did it, <laughs> and then <laughs> I shredded them, dashed them to bits, made tiny crumbs <laughs> of those plowing heroes. <laughs> Story have a point or expecting pity? I mean, he's going through hell, but at the same time, he it's not unjustified. Your story have a point. We're just doing some chest pounding. <laughs> the moral is... <laughs> You cannot kill me. You cannot stop me. I'll not be bound. Break any fetters. The curse. Free me, or I'll return to get you again. Werewolf hide, monster eye, werewolf mutagen, werewolf saliva, and werewolf meat. Again. <laughs> so let's uh, repair our armor. Okay. 
Uh, it's at 50% it looks like. Okay. Work through the amateur repair kits first. You save the more powerful ones for when I need them. And I think that's all in here. Need the key. And that's where I came up. And I think I've now seen everything there is to see here. So let's follow the trail. Prints lead to the well. Guess Craven didn't want to be eaten, preferred to drown. Jump into the well. Since I'm kind of doing two quests at once here... Get rid of the werewolf in the garden, and find the key Morkvarg mentioned using your Witcher senses. You know, before I jump down there, a thought occurs to me. I'm going to go back to the sluice gates. That was, uh, I think, a bit of a glitch. But okay. Because, yeah, um, there's the three sluice gates. And the one over here... Well, the one in the crosshairs right now is the one that got me to Morkvarg. The one over here leads out of the garden. But I want to know where the third one leads. If anywhere at all, of course. Since jumping down the well, I think, is um, going to be a point of no return kind of thing. Yes, there is a tunnel here. Very interesting. Oh, and there's some loot here. A padlock key. Ah, so that's the key he was looking for. Uh, amethyst dust, cured leather. Thumbs fell through the crevice years ago. Well, look, this is glowing red, but it's not letting me inspect it. Okay. And now we know what key he was after. And let's take a look. Uh, unlock the chapter house doors. That's going to be my priority, just because I don't know if I'll be able to come back into the garden after... after I deal with Craven and uh, stuff. So yeah, let's uh, switch that to the active quest.
and lock the chapter house doors. I think I know which doors those are. Yeah, here we are. So what do we have here? Radovid V the Stern, the Hard Slog to Greatness. It's a book I've read already. And... Uh, Zeracanian Blinders, Fire, Elemental, Silver Ore, Butter. So what about the other door? Uh, search the chapter house. Uh, a sword for witches, Redanian lager, and water. Oh, this one's sparkling. Uh, the Ein Scythe and the Ein L. Sad as it may be, uh, to many in our time, the word elf is a synonym for pauper, bandit, or layabout. She-elf is used by many to denote a prostitute or woman of loose morals. The adjective elven in turn describes damaged, needlessly complicated, or useless goods. Statistics for their part show that one in three elves living in Redania has spent time in prison, and a full one half of them have been fined at least once. The average lifespan of elves, though thrice that of humans, grows shorter each year. Given the above, it is easy to forget that elves, or Ein Seide, as, the, as they fashion themselves, were once a proud race that ruled the land stretching from the banks of the Great Sea to the west of the Blue Mountains in the east, and from the Dragon Mountains in the north to the Mahakam Range in the south. The ruins of their cities scattered throughout the known world bear witness to their former might, C.P. Monumentia El Forum by Istrid of Ein Glenel. Oh, geez, this is dense. Um, many of the most outstanding mages, artists, and poets of recorded history have been of this race. And we have elves to thank for dozens of ingenious items we rely on every day, from screw pumps to cosmetics. Those elves who dwell amongst, them, uh, amongst men have largely forgotten their history and culture, their soul silver of, sliver of elven identity left in them being a burning hatred for humans, whom they refer to as Doin. Uh, the elves of Dol Blathana, that puppet vassal of Nilfgaard, and of the wild highlands of the Blue Mountains have retained much of the old knowledge and culture, though they too are condemned to perish. Uh, this death sentence was handed to them by biology, for men, though short-lived, are several times more fertile than elves. Thus, while the Ein Saita's numbers continue to dwindle, ours grow at an alarming and ever-increasing rate. Some elves believe that the tide of events can be turned, that they can put a stop to the human expansion, and ultimately to their oppression by men. They look to their mythical cousins for salvation, to the Ein El, the Alder Folk. Uh, the Ein El are said to dwell in another world, or possibly another plane, in which they traveled during the mythic Age of Migration, and from which they at times journey to visit our world. Legend claims a gate between the worlds could be opened, allowing the Ein El to ride to their downtrodden brethren's rescue. These are, however, mere fables, naive fairy tales this race con uh, condemned execution, extinction uses to provide itself small comfort in these their last sad moments. Morkvarg's Journal Day 24. Chostar the Wise has proven unworthy of his moniker. He paid me not to attack his village and then, pleased at his own cleverness, called off the watch. Never had easier work in my life. We slit the men's throats in their sleep and plowed the women till dawn. Not much loot, but primo entertainment. Day 26. When we were sailing from Ranveig, we heard owls hooting, an ill omen, so it ordered us to turn back to shore. Puka laughed uh, about how I'm supposed to be so brave, yet I'm afeard of the gods. I tossed him overboard with a knife between his ribs, but I could tell I'd lost a bit of respect in the lad's eyes. We'll have to do something to prove I've still got the biggest prick on board, keep them from getting any stupid ideas. Day 33. Our visit to Hindersfjall was a success. Priestess is dead, monument smashed, holy tomes burned, mead barrels drained, we divvied up the silver, I took the votives. Uh, Norulf, son of Odik, took the basins and spoons. Mon, son of Gudv uh, Gudvar, took the candlesticks and jewelry while Einar, a son of Tordar, forfeited his share out of fear of Freya's wrath. Fine, all the more for us. Tomorrow we'll sail to Spikarog to see what the merchant wenches have brought to market. 
Ask Einar of Larvik why he lied to you about Morkvag. Mork Morkvarg. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that so it looks like it is something I'll be able to come back and do. For now, though, I'm looking at the episode timer, and I'm going to call it into the episode here. You know the drill. Click over there. Join me next time as we jump into the well and see what happened to Craven. See you then.